Very hard fought game on Saturday. Uh, plenty of opportunities for us to be successful in the game. Thought our kids played hard. I thought we played really well in spurts at times. And then, you know, they give them credit. They, they affected us in some ways. And when they made plays, they had good players too. Uh, we need to play with a little more consistency and we need to coach them. Like I say, we got to get them to where in the coaching part we can do it consistently and never let up. Because we had, uh, you know, played a good, very solid first half in the game. Uh, and the big thing, second half, we didn't score any points in the second half. We got to score points in the second half, do a better job of finishing drives the first half. Uh, you know, in, in the game, we we're, were in the red zone four times uh, uh, with uh, two touchdowns and two field goals, and we didn't do it. And then we had missed, a, of course, oh, and you said the other day, we didn't start that drive. I didn't mean to interrupt the other day. We didn't start it, but but we did get to the 19, which puts us in the red zone. I, probably, I, I was misconstrued, but we missed the third and one, the fourth and one right there. We didn't execute. And it was three times there we got six points. And uh, once we, you know, the first time we just uh, missed, went for third and one, fourth and one. We felt confident about what we had, had a good play. We just got to get it executed. And then uh, it was a tough one, but we, you know, they knew that's going to be in those situations. And the next time we just actually made a high throw. We had a guy open and missed a high throw. And then we scored the last time and got a penalty and uh, got moved back and uh, didn't get the touchdowns out of it. And that was critical in the game and in part what we did. But, uh, you know, we continually, we knew running the ball would be tough against them. They did a good job. We had some really good runs. There's more, your rushing yards we get in stats, you guys get in stats. Uh, if you really want to know what rushing yard, take the sacks away from that and put, add those back into rushing yards and take the sacks off your passing yards. That's what, like the NFL does. That's the real way we measure it. But uh, we had some good runs at time. Le'Veon had, we got some good stretch runs going out of the spread look and made a couple runs. Uh, unfortunately, second half when we got going, we had the turnover. We got a defense, they had a good drive, but then Bryce makes a really good pick in the second half. Got a good job. And then for the second play, we just missed a twist. We just missed a twist. Our guard tackle just missed a twist inside. And uh, they had pressure. And he's trying to – so he, we had a nice route down the field open, but they – Got to us on that on the twist, and he's trying to get up to his tight end, and we should get thrown a little more in front, and they got the turnover right back. I thought that was a critical play in the game that allowed them to get the momentum back after our defense had made a really good play to, to get them stopped off of that. And then we drive down and uh, move the ball again uh, and miss a uh, um, third and two. Yeah, third and two, and we don't even gain a yard. So it's fourth and one, and uh, we, get, we have a drive there. And then the next drive, we come back, and we got a good play, and uh, we ran into the official. They come back and scored, and we hit the official on a slant route that was going to be a good one. And then the next play, Anias gets on top, and we don't get the ball. And then we got to get it out there to him. He made a really good route, and we got to get it. And then, uh, of course, then we get the uh, block field goal. And uh, we turned all we did on that. He stepped down in, gapped it, and just got his shoulder, just leaned a little bit, got his feet tied up, and laid his left shoulder down, created a sink. And uh, they got through. It was a critical play in the game, and you know, we can't let that happen. Then we uh, get sacked down there and give up a. Uh, safety, and then we drive back and score, have it down there ready to two, and could have scored then with three and a half minutes. And then, you know, we end up getting a penalty and on the uh, touchdown, and then uh, didn't get the uh, deal, and then uh, they end up get, uh, getting the first down on the third and tip it up on a guy's knee and do it. But listen, our guys played hard, they played physical. We got to do a good job, better job coaching, just getting them uh, to do it better and better in what we did. Had plenty of opportunities in the game. Kids were physical, played hard, competed hard. Hey, it's four, four, and two. We're not where exactly where we want to be, but there's a lot of football left, and we got to. Play a big game this week at, in Tennessee, and we got to get back together and go play. So, questions? Out front, Brett. Your defense did a good job of getting them in some third and longs in those situations, but then they capitalized on that. When you go back and, and look at the tape, what what are some of the remedies there, solutions? Well, I think – well, and we were in second long. We brought five, and they, they – we had seven-man protection, got us blocked up, and got enough time to hold the ball to, to get it down the field. And we had pretty decent coverage on the over route, and they made it. And we had a third and nine, a third and 14. They made plays on those two drives in the second half, unfortunately. And what they did, just got to win, on, got to win some one-on-one -on -one blocks. I mean, earlier we, we had six sacks in the game and eight tackles for loss. And when you're getting those, you're winning some of your one-on-one -on -one battles. And sometimes they, you know, they, they blocked us a couple times in what they did and uh, got the ball off. And the Milrow made good throws. He, he threw the ball probably as well as he has and, and dropped back in any game he's played and did a really good job of getting them. And three did a good job of getting open on, on what they did. And then they caught a slant route. They got a quick route out one time. We, we got to get the inside leverage and get that cut off. And he got inside on a slant route and, and got through on a third and nine. It got out on time. So we just got to keep coaching and, and get them in a better position. Just follow up to that. How much is that is on the secondary as well? In terms well, in, in any of that, I mean, it, it all goes hand in hand. You, but you got to make the ball come out on time. 
I mean, you know, you can only cover so long in the secondary. I mean, secondary guys can say it. Some, but, but, you know, they got pretty good time on that one. That few they got blocked up. And the other one's a quick route. The other, the slant comes out really quick. It's hard to get the guys on slant. You may affect him or get a hit on him. But unless it's clean and somebody busts an assignment, very rarely do you ever sack a quarterback on a slant. And they got it out, and we got to be a little bit better coverage, a little tighter right there. When that, when that official was in the way, is that squarely on him? How does that work? Listen, I <laughs> – Great freaking question. <laughs> but usually what happens when they're at nine, they're supposed to step – well, I understand. They always get up to six to seven yards. And so we don't run routes off of those guys. He's a little bit deeper. He's almost nine and a half, ten yards deep. And they're not there very often. He happened to be there. And it is what it is. I mean, I, I, I ain't nothing else I can say, right? It is what it is. And we happen to have the wrong – have a great play called at the time that we – he and the official met. Give him a 12th defender, and <laughs> that's part. I mean, it's just part of what you go with, I guess. Staying down I front, mean, Travis. Doesn't happen very often, but unfortunately, it happened at a critical time. You know, but we still had opportunities. We got it. We got to overcome it, and I got. We got to do a better job and help them. What What is y'all's clock management system within the coaching staff? Is there one coach that's in? We know exactly how many times, how many timeouts it takes, how many when it goes, and the reason for that. We had 250. We had to score with 336, then we got to score. Got it back to about 248. The play that hurt – in the second down play, we took a sack. That's where that hurt us on second down. We got to throw that ball away on second down and ran it down. So when we ran the play on third down, we hurry up. We hurried up, got a play. We had two shots in the end zone trying to get the big guy there, and we got tackled on the two. There's 200, two minutes and 14 seconds left. So whether you, you're going to kick a field goal there at 3-2 because you have to have two scores. So we got to secure the first one to give us a chance. If you keep three – you're going to save maybe six seconds. All right, if you don't call the timeout there – and you rush your field goal team out, all right, it's going to take you 25 to 30, about 30 seconds to get lined up because it's on the far hash. And the other part of it, you're in unbalanced because anytime you're inside the 10 and on a hash, you have to unbalance, which is another call. And we had just had a field goal blocked. So I said, we, I want to make sure if I take the time out here, probably a six-second difference overall, but we're still going to get the ball back. If we, get, if we stop them with two and get the kick, there should be about a minute, 15, 10 to 20 left on the clock if it goes like it should have, and we would have it with no timeouts. Otherwise, we may have it with a minute, 20, 22. But I wanted to make sure we secured the field goal, so I took the timeout there to make sure we got lined up, got the unbalanced because we just had one blocked, and make sure we got the call. So we have, we have sheets that know when guys can take a knee. Actually, when they got the first down, they, they screwed up. If they, all they had to do was take a knee. They threw the ball and, and threw a play and then ran the ball. If they take a knee on first down, they never have to run another play. I mean, the game would have been over with once they got the first down with a minute 30 or a minute 40. And I don't know why they hurried up and threw the ball and, they got, and got the clock stopped, which saved us from at least having a chance at the end to have one play left. All they had to do was take a knee and end the game. So uh, I don't know why they did that, but it gives us a chance. Uh, but uh, at the end, uh, you know, we might have saved six seconds, but I wanted to make sure we got the field goal set and made it to get us back to one score. And if we got them stopped, we would have gotten the ball back with approximately a minute 10 with no timeouts. I know, I know you mentioned you have sheets that spell things out. Is there a specific coach that's in charge of kind of? Yeah, we have guys up top go over that, but not okay. in that situation. I know, you know it like, listen, mm -hmm. that thing I can recite it to you in my head. I mean, like I said, when they, when they, I couldn't believe they threw the ball and were running the ball. I said, when they got that first down, I said, game over. Then they threw it, and I went, oh, we may have – I mean, we may have a chance to have three or four seconds to run a play at the end. I mean, those things are in your – you you know them after so long for, for you know, what's in your head. And then, uh, is there uh, any updates on Layden Robinson and Tony Grimes? Uh, what, what's their – Layden? Uh, excuse me, not Layden. Uh, 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 Reuben Fothery. Reuben Fothery and uh, Yeah, Reuben's still Grimes. trying to rehab and get back. And Tony – Tony, I'm probably – he practiced a day or two, and he's got a lower body injury. It bothers him, and then it swells up and bothers him for a couple of days, and he can't practice, and he hasn't been able to practice consistently – since the season began, he practices a little bit here and there, and then it'll, it'll irritate him. And we wanted to play him and try to get him back. We, we can't get him all the way healthy to get him back in there. Uh, left, Mark, and then we'll go second row right. Well, part of my question just got answered. I was going to say, after uh, the trouble that DeBerry and uh, Deuce had. There's a reason we weren't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was going to say. But I, was, I was hoping that, you know, if we, if we think we're getting back, but then some of those things, just some of those injuries that. And like I say, I th you know, guys will tell me, hey, we're, I want to play, and then all of a sudden something will swell up on them. You know, I mean, it's, it is what it is. But is there a possibility that we might see uh, maybe McCall or maybe Javon Thomas? Well, any other there? thing, we could, and we'll, we'll, we'll look around. And but Josh still did some good things. He, a couple of those balls, he's there to make the play. They they made contested catches, and then he he bit on a 
uh, double move. We, got, we bid on a double move one time, in which he, we were pushing people under him to help him. He could have stayed back on that one. That was this made a mistake. But he's played good ball. He's tackled well, and and uh, you know we'll still we'll find the guys that do it, and he's still doing a good job in a lot of things though. Second row, right, David, and then Olin. Jimbo, Tennessee may be your biggest offensive offensive threat this year. You face they run the ball well, they throw well, they don't mm -hmm. give up a lot of sacks. Just overall, this they're challenge. they're a very good team. That's why getting to them I've, offensively, they're they're three. They got three back system. You know, uh, zero, two, and six. The running backs can all have juice. They're strong, and they're, and you think of them fast, but they're 210, 15 pounds uh, small. Those guys are all really good players up there. The receiver, uh, ten is man. He he's got juice. Squirrel is. Like, I mean, he is like a squirrel I man trying to get a hold of that guy, but he plays physical for a guy that's 165, 70 pounds. I mean, he, got, he can run. The receivers outside are tall. Mixing, I mean, it's hard to get on the ground. I remember him from high school. I mean, he, was a, he was a Florida kid in Orlando when he came out. He's big and strong. And he, and he can tell you what you'll see in that game. When he throws deep balls, I mean, he'll throw them. Our DBs are going to have to pay attention because it's balls that you usually don't see thrown that far. I mean, they're in the air 60 yards, sometimes 70 yards. And you're not used to ever playing the ball that far in the air. They do a really good job that way. And he can run. He's strong. Offensive line's very good in what they're doing. They're running the ball and got good bounce. Tight end's a good player. Uh, defensively, uh, they got rush guys on the edge. They 27 and 30 can bring it. Backer six is all over the place, can make plays. Uh, they rush. They're, they're physical up front. Inside guys, 21, those guys are big. Uh, sec five and one at corner are good, and the safeties tackle well. I mean, they do a good job. 12 and those guys at nickel. I mean, so they got a really good team. They're a punter. Can kick it right footed or left footed. I think he's only had two balls returned all year. It's all rugby stuff, and he can you can't he can roll to the right and kick it or roll to the left and kick it, which is a which is a problem. Field goal kicker seven out of eight. So I mean they're good in the field. I mean he's a, you know our guys from Aussie, but he can't kick it right and left. So, but they kick it right and left and do a good job. And 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 their special teams and their returners are good. So I mean they're they're a good football team. They're, and then offensively, like I say, they run and pass, and the quarterback's hard to get on the green. He's a big Joseph like KJ. I mean he's a big physical guy. Can you put your finger on some of the struggles on the road the last couple of seasons, and have you thought about changing anything? Well, I, I, change it how you approach. I mean, what do you go to the hotel this day, that time? What you approach is your maturity, how you play, you know, how you practice. We'll do things different. We'll crank up maybe more crowd noise. We'll crank up more situations. We'll do – you know, we always – that constantly does change. And usually on the road what happens, mature teams play well on the road. Mature teams that are confident and trusting things and, and believe in themselves. It's hard. Well, I mean, you just saw Alabama, what they have, eight? Eight false starts. I mean, they had 11 penalties or 10, 11 penalties. They had eight false starts in a, a group of guys. So, I mean, you know, you're on the road in this league. It's hard. Tennessee is one of those hard places. But hopefully your maturity and your leadership, and we're a little bit older this year, uh, hopefully that, those things will help. And, again, stay in focus. And that's, you know, unfortunately, that's what happened in this game in the first part of that second half. We had a critical mistake when we got a turnover that, you know, could have had a big play coming back. And we got to sustain, you know, and we got to create, pick up our short yard. We got to do a better job in short yardage and picking those things up. And, you know, hopefully that's what it gets down to. So we're always changing reps, how we, what we do in practice, what we do on, you know, we, we change constantly and try to look for things or, or different ideas from different coaches who've, you know, had success different times. Second row on the right, Olin. Jimbo, how, <clears throat> excuse me, been having some trouble with my voice. Um, how do you uh, ensure that, your guys uh, are able to bounce back and play with the same intensity against Tennessee that they played with Alabama. You just tell them what, what we did wrong. I, I, in the locker room, you saw a hurt locker room. You heard it. You saw a disappointed locker room. You didn't see a dejected or a quitting locker room. You get guys that, and, and our kids have character. They have heart. I think they're going to play their tails off. They knew it. And and like I say, I got back in that game. I said, you got to do ordinary things in, in games, and that's what it gets down to. And a lot of our critical things, we got to do a better job of coaching those ordinary things, and then and then they guys got to execute them just a little bit better in critical moments. And but they see it. There's no rift. We're not blaming them. We got we don't blame. I blame myself for what we got to prepare them better, get them ready to play better. And those, you know what's funny? I have kids call me, Coach, I'm, you know, it's my fault. It's not going to happen again. I mean, no, it's not your fault. You, you tried. I mean, God, there, there's caring in there. As long as there's caring and there's love for each other, you're going to go back and play hard and do what you got to do. And uh, the, uh, it, the, the issues in short yardage. Uh, well, the first one was a missed assignment. The very first third and one, we had a missed assignment up front. We had one guy go the wrong way, and it cost us. And on fourth and one, we just got to execute. We have, we have the play. We just got to get it done. And then a third and two, they got push on the on our wasn't on our line. They creased us at the tight end. Tight end, they got the good guys and got some push back inside on our on one of our tight ends backside that caused us not to get up in the in the seam and and get it. So we'll have to. We've been pretty good on short yardage up until this point. We've been we actually been along the goal line. We got down there when we got in goal line. The time before we you know we were able to run with our power formation. 
we got in. So we just got, we'll go back and evaluate it. We'll evaluate who we give it to and who we run behind. I mean, sometimes in those situations, only it's, it's about personnel. And what I'm saying is make sure you're running behind the right guy. Make sure you're giving it to the right guy. You always see guys, you know, certain guys are really good short yardage backs or certain guys are good goal line backs. Or we got to make sure we identify that and get the guys the right ball. Because Le'Veon's been running really good, but we got to make sure we give him some room to stick it up in there. So no concerns about just the physicality of the offensive line. I don't think that did that. And they're skiing. Listen, and those guys on that side, yeah, we stopped them. They're physical. I mean, you ain't going to play any bigger, stronger front guys than you just played. And I don't mean that in any disrespect to anybody else. They're going to be as physical and as strong as anybody and have been for years. So, I mean, that's a battle. And we won a couple, they won a couple. And, unfortunately, they won one that that third and two was critical. That uh, On the other, the third and one, the first one, we didn't give ourselves a chance because we made a mental mistake. We said we had, we had a step and created a seam for them. But the others, got, we've got to be better. Yes, sir. Coach, As always, listen, physicality is always a, it's a priority and something we try to emphasize. And it's always a concern because the people you play in this league always have good D linemen. So you're, that's why we work it hard and, and try to do it as live as you possibly can without hurting people in practice as much as we can. Right before TV road chip, and then we'll go Tyler on the left. Jimbo, your uh, red zone touchdown percentage is about 57%. Do you, do you have a percentage that – Over 75. You 75. Want, you want to say, when you're 75 or better in the red zone, you're better. And that's why I said we, we've neglected a couple times, and it's been throws and runs. It's, it's, I mean, you miss both. We had uh, – I mean, was it the uh, – you know, them game, we missed two down there. We had, I mean, we kicked four field goals that day. But we had two guys wide open we missed reads on in that game. And we had one at Auburn. The first drive at Auburn, we had a middle read that we should have gotten to. And then this game was more – we had some opportunities. But, yeah, we, you want to be at least three out of four. If, if you're three out of – we all used to say 70. I always say 75. I've led it before, 80, 88, 90. If you've, but if you're 75%, you're usually a pretty good ratio, especially playing good people. You can get touchdowns, yes, sir. And we're by, we're not. We got to do a better job. We got to score more points and get the ball in the end zone in the red zone. You were uh, plus one in turnovers on Saturday yep. for the season. You're minus three. I know we've talked about it for a while. I know you work on it every day. What what's well? The key and the there? other thing is you got to create. We hadn't created a lot, you know, and we hadn't gotten a lot of turnovers. We got a couple of the last couple of weekends, and really, I mean, the, the games we've gotten. A, four, I count a fourth down stop as a, a turnover too in that, in that regard. So we got one of those against uh, Arkansas. And where we didn't, we got two good turnovers this game. They put us, and one was stopped the drive, and one put, gave us in points, and we got a sack on the second play and didn't get it in. Uh, but, you know, you, you're trying to create. You can't, on defense, the thing you got to be careful of saying go create turnovers. You got to tackle the ball, you got to strip the ball, and you got to do it. But if you go trying to create turnovers or trying to intercept balls, sometimes you'll miss passes. In offense, we got to do a good job of taking and keeping it away. Unfortunately, the Arkansas game, we had a fumble, and, you know, Max had a, a throw out there we didn't need to throw. And then, unfortunately, when he tucked, he fumbled in this game. Trying to get it away, and we got to eliminate. And we had one, but one's too many. You get turnovers, and you got to eliminate. Them. That's the number one outcome in games. Back behind the lights on the left, Tyler, and then to the right, Ben. Yeah, Jimbo, you said Tennessee's got a couple guys that you know that can pass rush. How much, um, you know, on Saturday was it that the pass protection maybe needs to improve? Well, does it Max does a little bit. Sometimes we got to get the ball out. Sometimes we got to get through a progression. It's a combination. We had some protection, but we had some of those balls. And no, no, it's fancy. We the, should have been out and had places to go with it, and we got to get rid of it. It's a combination. You got to sometimes you get caught hanging on the ball trying to create a big play. You just got to, we got enough playmakers. If you just distribute the ball to our guys and let them catch and run. And we, for, we had some, at the end, when it got one dimensional, they were teeing off and coming, and they were trying to collapse those edges a little bit. But there's some balls in our, you know, we got to get out a little bit, and we, I think we can get to our guys a little bit quicker and get through the progression a little bit better, too. It's a combination of both. It's a combination of both. With it being on the road, you know, especially in an environment like Neyland, it's got to be that much more difficult to, to get those plays out. Well, no, not – I mean, you're reading. Listen, the good thing is it's noise. The good thing on the field is they got, like, they got 11 dudes, you got 11 dudes. You know what I mean? It's still 100 yards long. So, as far as what you're reading and doing those things, that communication can be, can be tough or that can, get, that can be the problem. That's the thing you got to make sure. If your communication is good, then you just got to trust your eyes. Then your eyes, you know, they can't do anything about that. But we got to make sure we're communicating well and everybody's on the same page, gets the right call or the check or whatever you got to do to make sure that we're doing that. That's, that's the biggest concern when you're on the road. It's the communication part. And, like, you know, hearing a snap count, hearing those things like Alabama had an issue with or, you know, getting the, making sure your hand signal, everybody gets on the same page. Once, but once that's done, then it goes back to your eyes, which, you know, you should be able to go play football. Right side behind the lights, Ben. Coach, just uh, talking about bouncing back from, as you mentioned, just the hurt locker room. Uh, you know, I, I know, how, how do you get the guys, I guess, to sort of reprogram to where 
you know, you give them the coaching points, 24-hour rules, and, and I, you I know, do they're, it I know they're cliches because they're true, but how do you get them to actually just by second nature kind of go into that mode? You do it all the time. Your whole program is based off that. The way you practice, the way your off season set up, believe it or not, how you set up off season, how you set practices up, how you set drills up. That's why you, we do try to practice at such a fast pace and get so many reps and get guys' minds off of it, and you get them to understand. Even when you, you know, and sometimes the biggest problem is not just having failure, it's having success. You want to dwell on the big win. You see it all the time. You see teams dwell on the big win, and then the next week come out and lay an egg. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing whether you win or lose. That goes back to maturity, and that's one of the things I like, that we do have good leadership. We have a mature team and an older team, and I think those guys will help in that regard and making sure our young guys understand that. But, you know, that can, it's a double-edged sword whether you win or you lose. You know what I mean? Especially you win a big game. Left side, third row, Alex. Which all big games. They're all big games. <laughs> I say Alex. big games. They're all big games. <laughs> Alex Carter and the CSU reps up. Hey, Jimbo, just what have you seen from Edrin Cooper's continued development the last few weeks in particular? I'm going to tell you what. He's trusting himself and his eyes more. His coaching, what I'm saying, it, and that comes with maturity. You, all right, I really, you know, sometimes you, you say players have doubt. They don't have doubt. But it's what they say. They don't want to make a mistake. It's not doubt. It, you have guys that, you know, they want to be perfect. They want to do things right, so it makes you be hesitant. Right now, he's got enough maturity, and he knows his assignments, and he's trusting his eyes, and he's pulling the pin and tackling. I mean, listen, when he runs and explodes, man, he's, he's one heck of an athlete. You know what I'm saying? He hits and he does things. He's tackling better. He's bending better, getting in better position. And what it's coming, Matt, is confidence, experience, and he's trusting what he's seeing, and he's reacting and not thinking. And then when he reacts, he's so athletic that he gets to place. I think we had three sacks this week, didn't he? I mean, tackles for loss and tackles, and he made 10 or 11 tackles. I, I, I can't remember what it was. We had, some, But, you know, him scraping and blitzing, and he's become a better blitzer. You know, he's just – it's experience. It's amazing when a guy will stay for, for three or four years at how much better they play. I hope they all take it, you know, adhere to that. Left side, Carter, and then Cease, you'll wrap this up. Hey, Jimbo, uh, Evan Stewart had a great start uh, to the game, but I think in the last – Three and a half quarters, he only had one catch. And I know the official had a – Well, he had one. <laughs> and we, we had him targeted and called for about six others. We had balls that he was a primary that we didn't get to. We should have thrown – we could have got him three or four of those bubble screens. We could have got him that one he caught earlier. There was three or four chances there that we were, you know, hopefully getting touches on him there, a couple of verticals we had. And you're right, we got to get the ball in one's hands. We had it targeted a couple of times. And Reed's a couple of times he went back to a nice on a read that Evan is, is viable on. He could go either side with a slant or that option route. He knows some of the things we're doing on each side. He's got the ability to off leverage of what they're doing. But we got to get the ball in Evan's hands, there's no doubt. Evan's got to touch it, and your playmaker's got to touch it. And he, he's, he's one of them. And then the – I want to ask you about like kind of the decision making process for like just the fourth and ones and field goals or, and stuff like that. Fourth How and much one, do you the, lean? the first fourth and one we went to, I go through them all. First fourth and one down there, we got good momentum. I, I like what the call we had. We knew what we had. We had the play. We just got to get it executed. We messed up the third and one. The second one, we were third and two, score 17 17. They had just scored a touchdown. We're still in the third quarter. We didn't gain a full yard. It was a little bit longer than a yard. We went for it on third and two and it made it fourth and just over a yard. We're on the 45. We got the best kicker in the country who I think, as I call, can wedge it on the one, two, five yard line as good as anybody. And unfortunately, when he, I wanted to pin him back and play it because our defense had been playing well. And instead of, if you don't make it there and we just missed a third and one, we'd missed a fourth and one already and missed another third and one. So why not pin him back, let the defense get it back in good field position. And unfortunately, that's one he, he kicked into the end zone, but then they still did an 80 yard drive in that regard there. So that's the two, that was the two fourth and ones on that regard. I was wondering, like, how much do you lean on gut feeling and analytics? You hey, lean on analytics, and you also realize on points and, and momentum of the game. you got to understand when the momentum and what the time at that time, once we failed on third and one and had a fourth and four, third and two, excuse me, had fourth and longer than one, and they had just scored a touchdown. If we give them the ball back at midfield, why am I giving that away? And our defense is playing their tails off. And we got the best punter, in my opinion, or one of the top two or three guys. I haven't had one that can stick it inside the 10 as much as he does. And wanted to pin them back and and hold that and then get it back and because moving the ball I wasn't we moved the ball we consistently moved the ball up and down the field and some of the things that we didn't do was was on our own uh, mistakes that caused us not to move the ball but uh, there so I go we but we have I know the analytics and I know the feeling you got to understand the flow of the game and thought those and right there was not time to do it left side C C wrap us up you talked about matching Alabama's physicality a lot of people talk about that. Alabama hangover. So where do you stand physicality? Because Tennessee also had an open date 
last week. Well, but physicality, we're – listen, we're built – if you look at our guys, we have a big football team. We're built for physicality. We're built for endurance and for that. So, we'll hopefully be just as – we've got to be just as physical. And every game you match in this league, you better be physical. Everybody's physical in this league. And Tennessee's very physical and plays hard too. So, that's just what you do week in, week out. In a kickoff return, it looked like there's maybe some miscommunication one time between Smith and uh, Owens where they looked Yeah, who, who called? They got to call it. And, and two's got to get up there and make the me, me, me call. And he went to do it, and he just he froze and then froze on 17. They got to tell 17 to get up to get communication there. They got to do a better job. We were lucky on hit, that ball hitting the ground. Anias went over and started to take it. Then two, he felt two coming, and we got to get that done. Yes. All right, Coach. Thanks for your time. Thank you, guys.